Hi guys and welcome to TechBased. In this video, we're going to talk about the latest Windows 11 Insider pre-build for the beta and the dev channels of the Windows Insider program for version 24H2. In this video, we're talking about the build 26120.3360. As I've said, 24H2 in the beta and the dev channels. And in this video, we're going to talk about what is new, what has changed, and also what is fixed in this latest build from the Windows Insider program. If you enjoy videos like these, please don't forget to leave a like below and also subscribe to the TechBased channel with the notification bell activated so that you won't miss any future uploads like this one. So let's begin with the video. First of all in this build Microsoft is applying some changes in settings, personalization and then lock screen where you're going to have the option to customize how widgets appear on the lock screen and this is first rolling out with the European Economic Area and then they're planning to expand this in other regions as well. Also related to the task manager in this build if you're going to the details pane and then right click on a random column and then click on select columns you're going to see that we have a new option which is CPU utility that can be named and you can enable this and this is basically a change in the way task manager calculates CPU utilization for processes performance and users pages task manager will now use the standard metrics to display CPU workload consistently across all pages and aligning with industry standards and third-party tools for backward compatibility a new optional column called CPU utility is available and this will basically show the previous CPU value used on the processes page Microsoft is also adding a new option in the context menu basically whenever you want to share directly to other apps you're going to have the option once it rolls out that will allow you to share directly to other apps emails use nearby share and more also we have two different app updates first of all let's talk about the snipping tool app which we've talked about before basically Microsoft is adding a small editor to the recording function of snipping tool so if I were to open the recording section and then click on start to start a short recording I'm going to move my mouse a bit and then stop the recording we're going to notice that we have this new option which is video trim if I click on it I'm going to be able to trim my video and also change its audio levels if I want. Then I can click on apply and the changes will be saved. Also, we have yet another app update and this is quite a big one, I can tell you, because it is related to Copilot. Microsoft is starting to finally release a native Windows app for Copilot. This is rolling out to all insider channels, so this is not specific to the dev or the beta channels. You can get it in the release preview channel and then the Canary channel as well. Just go into the Microsoft store, check for updates, and you should get this new version for Windows Copilot. Once you open it for the first time, we're gonna notice that we have this this. Hi, I'm Copilot, your AI companion. Set up Copilot and then you can select here what you want. Share optional diagnostic data to improve Microsoft products. I'm going to uncheck this. Auto start on login. I'm going to uncheck this and also open Copilot using all plus spacebar shortcut. I'm going to leave this enable and then click on continue. What we're going to do first, as you can see, we don't have the scaling supported for the Copilot app in this case. I'm just going to go to a smaller scaling so that we can see the app in its glory, I may say. But as you can see, there are a few bugs. When I change the scaling, we have a white or up top. I'm just going to leave it as window mode. The app overall looks good. Of course, this is the first preview of the app tested on Windows Insider channels. But I think that is a step in the right direction because, of course, you can use Copilot to ask questions. For example, what is the tech-based YouTube channel? Press enter and we should get responses. As you can see, it is pretty interesting. In the near future, it also should be able to do certain actions in Windows. For example, open notepad. But right now, that doesn't work. In the near future, that should work. I think this is pretty interesting. It looks pretty pretty nice and um, you have certain options here and there that you can use. It's not looking bad at all. And as I've said, it's really important to know that this is a native Windows app. It doesn't use the web view or anything like that. You can go into task manager and see that it is a standalone app right now. And I think that is great. Now let's talk about a few fixes in this build. For example, first of all, related to the file explorer, fix an issue or file explorer home might not load correctly and just show random floating text saying name. Related to the taskbar, Microsoft fix an issue where the underlines under app icons in the taskbar may get stuck showing even if the app had been closed. Related to remote desktop, Microsoft fixed an issue which was leading to some people experiencing remote desktop freezes on login or frequent disconnects. Related to the settings app, Microsoft fixed an issue where an underlying crash was causing settings to show an error message on launch and if you were impacted, you might have also seen a similar error message with runtimebroker.exe. There are also a few other fixes, for example, fix an issue where if you were upgrading to a higher bill number and it failed and rolled back, it could potentially resolve result in a duplicate Windows entry in the boot menu. And they also fix an issue for insiders using the ability to resume OneDrive, OneDrive files, which could result in your mouse frequently showing a spinning icon. There are also two new known issues related to Task Manager. After adding the new CPU utility column, you may notice that system idle process always shows at zero. And also the CPU graphs in the performance section are still using the old CPU utility calculations. One last thing that I want to mention in this video is that this could be the last build that is released 
for both the beta and the dev channels. So if you want to switch between the channels, you should do it right away because the next build could be a build that moves the dev channel on a higher build number for 25H2. So get ready for that. If you want to do it, just go to Windows Update and Settings, Windows Insider Program, and then choose your Insider Settings and switch between the channels. For example, you want to go to the beta channel, dev, stay on dev, or go to the Canary channel if you want. So take your decision as soon as possible because as I've said, this could be the last build in which this window is available. So this was the video for today. Of course, for more information, you can check out the article below or the official Microsoft blog post. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave a like below and also subscribe to the TechBase channel with the notification bell activated so that you won't miss any future uploads like this one. I was your manager from TechBase. Until next time, have a nice day.